a quick activity for introducing conservation of matter. First, you're gonna start with a bag of beads that includes different colors and different shapes. I just got this at my nearest dollar store. You'll notice that I have six different colors in the beads, but I also have three different shapes, hearts, stars, and flowers. Once you've organized them by color, it's easy to put them into a bag, and I just take about four or five per color, um, and I only have about four colors in each bag. So four colors in each bag, and take about four or five beads per color, and I just throw them into a bag. You're gonna give the bag to the students, and then what they're going to do is they're gonna have a before and after, and it will say the color and the shape here. Now you can have them write it, or you can do a worksheet that already has it ready to go if you wanna save some time. And the first thing you're gonna have them do is first sort them by color. So they're going to group the different beads by color. So here we have the beads by color, and we have orange, yellow, pink, and green. So they're going to write those colors for the before. So we have orange plus yellow plus pink plus green. And then they're gonna count up how many they have. Do they have any green stars? They're going to mark that down, so equals one. Green flowers equals three. Green hearts equals zero. And they're gonna continue through, going through and counting up how many they have of each color shape combination. Once they have that done, then for the after, you're having them group them by shapes. Now we have them by shapes. We have stars, flowers, and hearts. So it goes from the colors, and then you have them have an arrow, stars, flowers, and hearts. And the reason I really like these beads is because, again, you've got four different groups, and now we have three groups. And what they're going to do is they're going to, once again, count them up. How many of each color, shape, combination are there? And what you want the students to discover is that even though we have different combinations that they are now rearranged into a different group, the actual number of green stars from one to the other didn't change. The number of green flowers from before and after doesn't change. The number of green hearts from before and after doesn't change. So the before of what they have and the after what they have does not change. However, they are being grouped differently, which represents the conservation of matter. These could all represent a different type of atom, and here are your different compounds. So this shows, again, the conservation of matter because we have four groups and before, and now they're in three different groups, but the number of what you actually have does not change before and after. So these could represent different atoms and these would be the compounds they're located in and new compounds, but the number of atoms stays the same. This is a simple activity to help your students understand how to balance chemical equations using poker chips and checker pieces. I have a simple equation, nitrogen plus hydrogen equals ammonia. And I'm gonna have the students model using the chips what it looks like. So I'm using the nitrogen, for blue for nitrogen, I'm using white for hydrogen. And I'm gonna have them go ahead and put how many we have of each one to get started. From there, you can have them count how many they have of each type of piece. And the colors of the chips really helps the students understand that. So how many nitrogens, how many hydrogens on this side, how many nitrogens, how many hydrogens on this side. Once they've counted them up, you can ask them if the numbers on the left match the numbers on the right and have them choose one to get started with. So with this one, there's two nitrogen on the left and two or one nitrogen on the right. So you want to make it so that way there's two on the right. So you can ask the students, okay, what can we do? And this is a great way where you can talk about, you can't just add another chip because then that becomes N2H2 and that's not the compound we're using. So we need to add a full other compound of this and have them go ahead and model that out. Once they've added a second compound, have them count it up and change the number from one to two. Now they can see that the nitrogens are now equal, but the hydrogens are not. There are six hydrogens on this side and only two on this side. So once again, you're going to want them to figure out 
what do they need to do? Knowing that they can't just add hydrogens to this compound, they can only add more of that compound. So that's when you can ask them, how many more of these hydrogen compounds are you gonna need to equal the six? And they will, should come up with, they need two more for a total of three. Then you have them change the numbers and change the number here in front. Here now they can see the nitrogens have two and two, hydrogen have six and six, and they can visually see that there are two chips on this side and two blue chips on this side, that there are six white chips on this side and six white chips on this side. So using the different colors, combinations, you can easily show them how to balance chemical equations. This is a quick, easy, conservation of mass activity. First, you'll have a glow stick. I got these at the dollar store, super cheap. You put the glow stick on it, then you snap it so that the chemical reaction occurs and you find the mass again. The mass before and after doesn't change because it's a closed system. So again, a super easy way to demonstrate conservation of mass. An online investigation I like to use with my students is this FET balancing chemical equations activity. I have them start off with the introduction and with this activity, they start by putting everything to one and using the balance tool. And what they do is then try and make these balanced by counting up the number they have on the left and the number on the right. So it shows them that for nitrogen, there are two nitrogens on the left. It gives them a model of it, plus a visual on the balance, and that there's only one on the right. And so what they can do is then try and change it. They already have more on the left than they do on the right. So if they increase the one on the right by changing that one to a two, it'll balance the nitrogen. And then all they have to worry about is the hydrogen. The, there's now more hydrogen on the right than there are is on the left. And so they change that number until they see it's balanced and it gets a happy face. And they'll do the same thing with separate water and combust methane. And then they can play a game and they choose their level and they go through different ones to see how they can balance it and they keep doing it. But this time there is no scale to balance it. They just have to continue to go through it until it's balanced and they can check it. If it's a happy face, they got it correct. If it's a sad face, then they can try again. So for example, if I do this one, it'll say, nope, not balanced, try again. So I really like this activity. And with my students, I have them fill this in. So I give them the directions. They had to give me a screenshot of the before and after pictures. And then they just answer questions about what they did and how they did it and what they think that means. So again, I like this FET balancing equations activity to help my students understand how to balance equations. Another online activity that your students can do, which once again does the same idea as the FET one, is this SIMPOP balancing equation. So if you just type in Google SIMPOP balancing equations, you'll get this little simulation here. And they have different ones the students can do, formation of water, formation of ammonia, and it starts off automatically with them at one, and then it gives them here the element, how many are on the left side, how many are on the right side, and it tells them if it's balanced or not. So here they can see that the hydrogens are balanced, but the oxygens are not. There's two on the left and one on the right. So again, they go through it. Now the oxygens are balanced, but the hydrogens are not. So they keep going until they get two checks or all checks, and then they can say that the, they balance the equation. So it has lots of different ones uh, with two or three com um, elements that go with it. So they can take turns and practice how to balance equations. Again, this is another great one to use to again, have your students practice understanding balanced equations and how to make sure that conservation of matter um, uh, 
and also to make sure that that equation is demonstrating conservation of matter, which says that what they have on the left side, they have to have on the right side. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.